guys. Welcome to the A Lot of Thoughts podcast. Sorry I'm a little bit quiet. I am recording this quick intro before the family wakes up. Um, But basically today is part two of the interview with Katie. So make sure you check out part one. um, And it's going to be really good. If you have any comments, concerns, complaints, make sure you reach out to us. We really want to know what you think. And without further ado, here is Katie. Speaking of seeking truth, let's talk about conspiracy theories. Now, whenever we first started talking, this was huge. You had Plandemic. There was another one that I don't remember what it was. Um, And now we are to this point where I think some of us have come to the other side of conspiracy theories, kind of having like a little bit more of a view. But I still think it's really popular right now to jump into them. So um, what... Just, I don't know, conspiracy theories. Go. So, listen, I don't doubt at all that some of what the conspiracy theorists are saying is true. Like, it, like they were very um, loud and involved about the pedophilia stuff. Like, they were, like, one of the first group of people that started to talk about Epstein and stuff going on before Epstein was even arrested. Um, and that about that there's a mass, like, pedophile ring. Which, look, that that ended up being true. We know for a fact that there was an elite pedophile ring because of Epstein and witnesses and Gazelle, or whatever her name is, Maxwell, that's in prison right now. Um, We know that that's a thing. Um, We don't quite know the depths. And what I don't like about conspiracy theorists is they, let's, let's take Tom Hanks, for example, or anybody that was on the plane with Epstein, okay, going to his island. We don't know for a fact that every single time he went to his island, there were underage children there and there were was debaucherate behavior. We don't have that um, confirmation. So I think people will take a celebrity that was even connected to him or that has weird things, but there's not real evidence and say, oh, they're a pedophile, and say all these things about them. And again, as Christians, we're we are supposed to wait for facts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a pretty vile thing to accuse somebody of pedophilia if, it, if it's untrue. Um, so anyways, back to the conspiracy theories. There, there is a real deep rabbit hole there of, of evil, and I've gone down it. I've lost sleep over it. I've, I've read a lot of the stuff. And for one... A lot of it is theory. So we we don't know that a lot of it, it can't be confirmed. Um, and we're wasting our time on, sometimes you're, you're wasting your time on theory and speculation. And, and you spend hours and hours on these deep rabbit holes when you really could be spending that amount of time in the word of God, which is the truth, the only truth we have. Mm-hmm. Um, the word of God and doing work for the kingdom and people would argue like, Oh, we are doing kingdom work because we're exposing evil. There's a, there's a line there because God doesn't necessarily want us. I know that the verse have, have no part with unfruitful works of darkness, but expose them. Right. But those are things that we know for fact, Mm -hmm. first of all, are evil. Second of all, our ultimate, uh, our ultimate charge is to share the gospel and to study scripture and to make disciples and to be involved in our churches. And all of those things should come way over conspiracy theories. And people make conspiracy theories their life because not only is it, a, it's kind of an esoteric knowledge. So esoteric means a special knowledge. It was a knowledge that Satan tempted Eve with in the garden Mm -hmm. that you'll know good and evil and you'll be like God. So when people get so deep in conspiracy theories, I think that's the, that's the, um, that's the apple is, Oh, I'll know good and evil. I'll know the depths of evil. I I have this special knowledge into this deep evil that nobody else really knows about. And it, it gives you a sense of power and a sense of this special knowledge of good and evil. Well, we're, we're not really called to do that. Scripture actually, calls us to do the opposite it tells us to um in philippians 4 8 
Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything, if anything is excellent of, or praiseworthy, it says think about these things. Focus on these things, things that are pure and ab admirable and lovely. It does us no good to just, we're supposed to meditate on God's law and on his word. We're not supposed to sit there and meditate on how evil can evil get. Evil, evil can get as evil as you can even dream because the world is mostly evil. Mm -hmm. The Christ, Christ followers are a narrow, small group, but evil has been running rampant since the beginning of time. And also there's nothing new under the sun. So there's no evil so deep that it's never been committed before. Mm -hmm. So it does us no good to sit here and go down these rabbit trails that can't even be confirmed lose sleep over it listen it causes anxiety it because there's nothing you can do about it what are you going to do about it just know about it and then like post about it on the internet but what are you what is going to be done nothing because it can't be confirmed also you're not the fbi so you're not going to be able to prosecute them or do anything about it yep. now with that said i think that there is some there is some um, benefits sometimes to exposing things on the internet that are true and verifiable and things have been busted or whatever through that. Mm -hmm. But conspiracy theories are a very, um, it's a dangerous line to walk. And not only that, there's a lot of false light in conspiracy theories and conspiracy theorists like the Q stuff. They, they really paint Trump as a savior and a lot of the yes. Q Christians <laughs> are very prophetic. They're very NAR, New, Apo New Apostolic um, Re Reformation. And they they twist scripture all the time. They mm -hmm. come up with um, with new meanings to scripture. They, they read Trump into the scriptures, which he's not at all in the scriptures. And there's a real false light there of knowing mm -hmm. good and evil and the Savior and it all coming about through Trump and Trump really fighting this um, this evil dark world. And listen, let's, scripture says that those who aren't Christians are enemies of God. Trump is not a Christian He that we know of. I know that we can't mm -hmm. completely judge the heart, but he's openly said he doesn't think he needs to repent for anything. Yep. Um, so we can't really count him as a Christian. And if he's not a Christian, he's on the same team as satan so all of these people including pro people who profess christ are putting all of their hope in him as being this giant fighter of evil when he's really on the same team i mean i think he is a is a grace to our country right now with fighting for some of the things that the lord would fight for um and would have christians fight for and obviously again a king heart is like channels of water in, in the Lord's hand. So, I mean, he's using Trump for a season, but ultimately, from what we can tell, Trump is lost. So we cannot read him into some hero into scripture. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but. Well, I was just going to say that it's funny because conservatives, I, I say the general because I've done this and I've seen it done. We are just as, we can be just as hypocritical as anyone else. Right. Um, and whenever um, George Floyd, when that incident happened, a lot of us were out there saying, well, don't call um, whatever policeman, sorry, I'm not good with names. Um, don't call him a racist because we don't know how this was motivated. And then on the other hand, we jump after everything that has like the slightest right. tent of truth. Exactly. And, and it, the the other thing I wanted to say, you mentioned that it's a rabbit hole and yes. we have to be so careful, especially as women, mm -hmm. because it is so easy, especially if you stay at home in any capacity. I work from home. Yeah. Um, it's, it's so easy to just start scrolling and scrolling and neglect your family and neglect your home. And I don't care what kind of truth you're seeking. God has called us to um, take care of our homes, take care of our families. And like you said, opening the word of God, um, if 
your first thing is you need, I don't, I don't really understand the cue thing, but if the first thing you need to see if there's been a cue drop in the morning, right. There's right. a priority thing that's wrong. If, and it's, right. That can be said for anything. If my first thing in the morning is that I've got to go see Katie's Instagram stories and see if she's like said anything revealing, you know, right. um, there's a problem with that. And so we really have to be careful yes. um, not to make any of this an idol. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, that's how, how we do that is whenever you talk about Philippians, there are multiple times where we see in Philippians where Paul is talking about he would rather be dead than alive, but he knows he should be alive um, right. because God has put them, him there for a purpose. And then he talks about the upward call of God, that that's constantly on his mind. And because of that, that is how we get to that point of understanding how persecution is going to work and understanding the level of truth seeking that we need to be doing because our minds are on God um, rather than on what's happening in this world. And I love how God will just kind of weave those things together that if we're focused on him, then we can discern these things. Absolutely. We can discern when it's important to post on Facebook about something or when it's not. Um, but yeah, definitely yeah. important. And we're to, yeah, and like you said, we're to meditate on his law day and night. We're not to meditate on who the next possible pedophile is and what Q's next drop is. I mean, it, it's it's such a slippery slope. Um, and on top of that, if you, if you research, like, the pandemic movie and all of these movies exposing these deep evils, if you, if you research the people who are creating these movies— are so deep into new age. It's not just the pandemic creator. What was the other one? There was another really. I know. I can't think of what it was. I'm blanking. All of those creators are are not Christ worshipers. They mm -hmm. clearly worship the new age. They are also involved in meditation and yoga and crystals and and everything. And so again, we're putting our hope into into haters of God. Instead of, um, it, scripture says that it's, it equips us for every good work. We need to be more focused on the role at hand that God has given us. Like you said, our home, our husbands, our families, um, our local churches our and, and learning scriptures for ourselves than just going down these rabbit holes all the time of the what ifs of the theories of it's crazy. It, it's going to waste your time and it's going to give you anxiety and it's yeah. going to, you can't help but make an idol in your heart of it. So mm -hmm. don't even fool with it. And it's funny because one of my true tests of where I'm at, um, a lot of times I'll cut out social media. Well, I work on social media, so not all the way. Um, but I have a few tests of my own to determine whether it has become a sin. And right. one of those many tests is if I am consistently posting um not like pictures of my kids or something but or kids I only have one and I'm not pregnant so <laughs> let's clarify that Is I only have an one announcement no <laughs> that's Anna Anna's the pregnant one um so if I am constantly posting all these conspiracy theories and I have not once thought maybe I should post the blatant gospel all right then the pandemic or whatever else has become the gospel for me. Right. And right. that's false. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. That's false. Right. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and while you were talking, this is a little bit beside the point, but back to pandemic, I just remember yeah. the guy that created the pandemic. So all of these things also give all these little false nuggets about Christianity. And the guy that made pandemic says at the beginning of the movie, you know, I didn't find God in church or through anywhere else. I found him by, by knowing about evil. That's not how you find God. You find God through Christ. And they all say they, they know God because they know evil. And that nowhere in the Bible is that the gospel. It's a false, it's a slightly false gospel. Then he also goes on to talk about this experience he had in a Catholic church. This might have not been in the movie. This might have been in an interview of his that I listened to, but that he that that somebody came and laid his hands on him and he had this warm sensation go throughout your body and guys this is like the false Christ we see in Bethel it's like the mm -hmm. same thing that people are 
it's a false Holy Spirit that people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's so Kundalini-ish, which is like a, a mocker of the Holy Spirit, that the fact that even kind of trusting this person with having some type of truth is insane. And, and these things aren't just spiritually neutral. They're not just talking about what's happening in Hollywood. They're also bringing in spiritual aspects all the time. All these people are talking about like, they're talking about their view of God. They're talking about their view of uh, salvation. They're talking about their the good and evil and and angels and demons and so they have a theology and they're evangelizing it to the masses mm -hmm. uh, it's not spiritually neutral absolutely absolutely and and we say this with i i always want to say this is all said with like a lot of grace and love because i posted the pandemic video <laughs> and then i was like i there were multiple people. I know you were one who posted about it and it just, I think I went back and deleted it. Um, just yeah. because I realized this is not conducive and that doesn't mean that I don't shoot it to Anna and say, Hey, let's discuss this. Right. Um, but publicly supporting something like that okay. specifically, you've got to be so careful as a Christian of the verse, um, to not stumble it says mm -hmm. little ones, but it really means, I mean, it could be children, but also baby Christians, or it's better for you to have a millstone or a giant rock around your neck and be thrown into the ocean because you sharing it publicly, you never know who else is going to look at it. And then it's going to stumble them all the way down into these conspiracy theories, rabbit trails, and possibly even the new age. Yep. Uh, if we're, if you're going to share things like that, which I don't think that you should, unless like you said, you know, you're not going to stumble a sister if you send it and be like, look, this is totally new age, but try to look at the other stuff they have to. Yeah. But got to give things with a warning. And then you also have to take it all with a grain of salt. And then you also have to decide if it's worth it for you to, you're supposed to be careful what we see and what we hear mm -hmm. and what we let into our hearts. You also have to decide if that's worth it because. Yes. You can't unsee it. Which is where having people who can help you weed through these things is so important. Um, right. Having someone who is older in the faith or yeah. someone who really, really has that. My husband has the blatant. When I say I don't have the gift of discernment, it's probably because I'm comparing myself to him. He is very discerning. And I will always right. take everything to him and say, well, what about this? Right. You know, we need to make sure we're not just trusting our own heads and especially our own hearts that are just, yeah, they're deceitful and we want to be coddled. <laughs> yeah. They're deceitful. And, and we're all like Eve. We're, we could easily be tempted into mm -hmm. setting up idols or wanting to know esoteric good and evil knowledge and all of the things. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's yes, constantly exactly. be covered and grounded in the word. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, any other thoughts on that before we move on to the next question? We can move on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I keep saying, have any other thoughts, and I can see it going through your head, like, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, but... yeah I was going to say, I could, t I mean, yeah, I could talk about it forever, but. Would you have an Instagram live video on conspiracy theories? And... Yes, yes, people can go Here. to. Yeah. I've got a video about conspiracy theories, and then I also have a video about pandemic and showing how it's. Mm -hmm. Even the imagery, or is maybe, is it pandemic? I can't uh, keep. There's one of them, and even the imagery in the movie, or the trailer, is, like, so new age. And I would have never caught that. So I, I think you were one of the main people that I used as a source when I was digging through it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, anybody else talking about it. Yeah, okay, so I have um, a video called conspiracy theories on my Instagram, um, IGTV. And then I also have one called the pandemic problem and on IGTV. Okay, okay. So people can check that out if they want to hear more. Okay. About that. Sweet. And do that. Cause those are sources that I used. Um, very, <laughs> very good. Okay. So we're just going to completely swap gears and talk about believing all women. And it's, it's funny bringing up this question because I actually have a friend who is an atheist liberal. We disagree on pretty much everything, right. but one time I wrote her about something and I, and it came up and she said, Oh, that believe all women thing is absolutely dumb. And I was oh, like, really? 
<laughs> yeah, so we agreed we, on that one. Yeah, we agree on something. Yeah. Um. So why it okay? Is it right or wrong? Why is it right or wrong? All of I think I gave my opinion already, so never mind. But yeah, it's wrong, and also that that's saying that no woman ever is able to commit a lie. It's saying that women cannot lie, which we know is false. Also, if you read the Bible, there are so many wicked women on there that lead people astray. There's also a lot of great women, but the Bible's filled with men and women that are lie and lead people astray. Samson's wife comes to mind immediately. Um, she was his demise, pretty much. So, believe all women is insane. Because we literally know so many women. You look at the news and find lying women. And then you, and then, so all of this kind of came from the Kavanaugh thing, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Did it not? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So we talked about this earlier, but like, we we have a a process, a due process in this country, which is actually modeled after God's justice because it is, proving that the person is guilty it's not automatically assuming they're guilty so you're not showing partiality just because of who they are or whatever if they're guilty or innocent but you're proving if they're guilty or innocent and then you're giving them a proportionate justice so you're not giving everyone the maximum you're giving mm -hmm. them justice according to their deeds whereas i know people say well god gives everyone the maximum of going to hell or you know christians heaven yes but he also says in scripture that you're still going to be judged by your works and your deeds and hell will be hotter for some people than others and heaven will be different as, as far as rewards for some people than others you're still going to be in a miserable place or you're still going to be in in god's presence but you're still judged on your deeds so and how you will spend that eternity so the same with our judicial system. So believing all women and with the Kavanaugh thing, they had zero, zero evidence. And in, in fact, against him, in fact, the, the lady that came out against him in high school, and then they, they found another lady that said that she, that she was gang raped by him in college, ended up saying later that it wasn't him and she didn't really know. And she was just kind of um, pressured into saying it was him. And, the lady from before, I think something happened to her, and Kavanaugh even agrees, but it wasn't him because this is truly God's grace. He kept a journal in high school that like dated and gave gave times of where he was and what he was doing, um, and that he still had it. And that was one of the biggest things that helped him out. So I could just see God's providence all over mm -hmm. that. But we have a due process and you can't just believe all women as if they're not liars. It, that's completely insane. But it's funny because again, like I said earlier, Kamala, the left constantly changes the goalposts and constantly changes the rules and breaks their own rules all the time. But how she believed Kavanaugh's accuser and wanted to give him the maximum. And then also said, well, she believed Biden's too, but she wants to be, his VP. So it's like, yeah, completely insane. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so basically, the quick answer, believe all women is a completely a joke. I don't know a better way to say it. Yeah. And it I mean, the reason that I ask because Kavanaugh was a long time ago, or at least it feels like 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we see how that has seeped into everything now, mm -hmm. even even in the church. Um, you see this this tendency for women to believe that they've been victimized. Mm -hmm. um, I remember whenever Me Too started and everyone was saying every woman has been sexually harassed. And my husband looked at me and was like, can you recall like a time? And I was like, I don't know if I'm just like ugly, but I don't recall a time. Um, now, since then, I did have a stalker at work one time. It was really weird. That's yeah. a side's point. <laughs> but... Yeah there's this idea that we are supposed to lean into this as hard as possible. And I really, really, really think that that is how we're getting to this egalitarian light mm -hmm. idea in the church um, that, you know, 
we're pushing the boundaries. Well, women can't be a pastor, but they can preach. Right. And um, they can't do this, but they can do that. And trying to just edge away from what the Bible says because we've been taught to victimize ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And we've, and we've taught people they better listen to us and that we have something important to say because you've suppressed us for so long. Mm -hmm. When, again, it goes straight back to the curse where Eve's desire would be for her husband. And that didn't mean anything else other than for his role, that mm -hmm. women want the man's role and we have submission problem and men are now weak and they don't even know their Bibles and they are allowing it. So mm -hmm. they're, they're listening to basically whines of victimhood and then they're not strong in the word. They're not strong men and women are succumbing to their curse because they're not strong women. And it's funny because when women are are not strong women they act like strong women because mm -hmm. they don't they have a submission problem and they have a role problem and then when men aren't strong men they're weak men so mm -hmm. then it, the society implodes and it's in the church yes absolutely and it, it's just that double standard thing so actually this past sunday i think i was discussing um over lunch with my in-laws and my pastor is my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. And I was just saying that it is crazy that we're all sitting around saying, not all, but you know what I mean? Support all women, believe all women, empower women, all those little sayings. And yet we've got Amy Comey Barrett, who yes. is now being told like, you have seven kids. Can you really do this? All right. And it's, it's just, it's crazy because when you feed on these lies that just sound good, and again, we're, we tend to want to be coddled, um, right. but believe that we're not being coddled, coddled. When you follow these lies, there are breakdowns in it. So believe all women, unless that woman disagrees with you. Right. Um, it's believe all women and it's get a woman in the... In, as the new justice but not that one like mm -hmm. you can't do that. you have to do another one that we that we choose and the other thing that's annoying to me and trump sort of bowed to this he knew he had to put a woman in there um because everyone would freak out because every because the feminists would freak out so he sort of bowed to the mob there i was like don't worry i'm gonna replace her with another woman like mm -hmm. he knew that he couldn't dare put a man in that position um or he would be done because he'd be mm -hmm. called a patriarch and a, and a suppression of women. And it's really sad that this is where we're at now that not that she's not, um, not that she doesn't have the, the values or morals that we stand for, but he would not have been able to put a man there, even if oh, he was yeah. qualified. So mm -hmm. we can see that leaking all into that system too, that you better replace her with a woman. Oh Those Yeah. If there's a better man for the job. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's really sad. I hate that, that we've now moved to the place where you have to hire based upon gender, not who's best at the job, and now also race and not who's best at the job. Mm -hmm. So anyway, again, that's not, that's not godly. And that's also not just, and that's not how law and order should be. It should be the person that is qualified at the highest because once we start showing partiality more things are going to be corrupt and go down mm -hmm. the tube which it's funny because it seems so hard to say like to some degree to say that you disagree with something like believe all women the world would someone would just be like oh yeah that's just really hard but because we have the standard of god it's really easy it's and you right and you have my same friend that told me that she thought that that was a ridiculous statement, atheist liberal. And I'm talking to her one day and I said, the problem is, is that I have a standard and, and you don't. And she was like, well, explain that to me. And I said, well, okay, why is rape wrong? And we went down that rabbit hole. Of, yeah. In the end, she was like, well, I really don't know. Like there were, a, there was discussion in between. Yeah. And, and, and the like, reason is because God has written his law on your heart. You mm -hmm. know it but you will you're refusing to say why yes um and, go ahead and we 
we want to have freedom and I think everybody in the world wants to have freedom but when you aren't abiding to the standard of God then you really don't have freedom no true freedom is in Christ Mm -hmm. because you you have a you know that you're his no matter what that you can fall so short and he'll forgive you and extend grace to you and new mercies every morning and he bears your burdens and um, his yoke is, his burden is light. His yoke is easy. All those things, it's so freeing. He renews our hearts. He gives us his desires. It's There's true freedom in Christ. Mm-hmm. But yeah, under worldly freedom, you're, you're just going to find yourself in just a heap of sin because sowing your flesh only reaps death. And mm-hmm. that's why so many people... Like you look at, as I see Ali Stuckey posts like the mug shots from these riots the day before of all the people that were arrested and most of them white um, in the riots. And she's like, y'all, these people are not well. And she's done it like four or five times, like four different days. They all look like corpses or like drugged out or just, just unkept, the most miserable people on the planet because mm-hmm. they're just sowing their flesh and it leads to death and disrupt and destruction and not to joy or true peace or happiness. And it's, that's the lie that Satan gives freedom yeah. to find happiness. And it's so untrue. Mm-hmm. And kind of to go into my last question I had, um, I think that the world's freedom ends up taking you backwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, And so we're going to talk about a subject that has been talked about a lot, but I know that we have people who listen who have um, probably not heard the same resources as we've heard, um, hence the reason we're going to have this discussion. And that is Cuties, Mm -hmm. the movie on Netflix that should be set on fire. Can it be set on fire? It's digital. I'm not sure. Um, No. But I, the reason I say this is because it, I wonder all the people who are standing up for this that are Christians, because unfortunately there are people who are claiming Christ who are also saying, well, we really can't like don't cancel Netflix and all that. Would they put their child in that movie? And that's, would they want someone to prey on their child? No, because that's what I'm saying when freedom takes you backwards, but let's, let's just talk about cuties. Here's where the movie is completely hypocritical. And this is like, these are people's defenses of it is, oh, well, it's showing the atrocities of child sex exploitation and, and social media and, and grooming girls through social media. Um, it, it's combating the sex trafficking and the child um, making children sexual objects. But the reason it's not combating it is because it made a bunch of children sexual objects. It's very, very simple it's now we've given pedophiles that 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 this is their thing something to watch and entertain and feed on and to create more impulses to go out and do it and to get more of it we fed them instead of the opposite we don't have to show the depths of sin and depravity to understand that it's sin and depravity mm-hmm. like I, somebody was using in a Twitter conversation, some prof, someone who professed Christ was saying to me, like, the Bible mentions rape and sin all the time. And it's like, yes, it mentions it, but it doesn't go into grave, deep detail of these atrocities. It it condemns it. It doesn't feed somebody to want to do it more. It gives, mm-hmm. it tells you what it is, and then it tells you a consequence. Um, I can't even believe, especially the people that profess Christ, that they would even kind of um, entertain the idea that this is okay. And on top of that, the directors for this movie um, cast or, or let audition 600 little girls. 600 little girls twerked in no clothes for adults that are u- usually they're filmed for the the audition process are usually filmed. So now not only that, but parents, which is sick, have put their daughters in these positions. Um, and 
the directors, who knows what creeps you are. And in fact, we know for a fact that, so this film was debuted at Sundance and the Sundance co-founder gave this film like one of the highest um, rewards, which is one reason why it went through to Netflix. And then that co-founder was arrested after this for child pornography for the second time. So we know for a fact that this is feeding these people and that they enjoy this type of thing and that it's all in this industry yet. Oh, but we're, we're, we're exposing the evils of it. No, you're not. You're feeding it. It's absolutely insane. And again, back to the verse about not, not letting your eyes, your eyes, a window to your heart and we're letting things in and it's desensitizing us. And it's, Mm -hmm. um, you never know who it's going to stumble. Again, it's it, it can stumble so many people. It's really scary. And um, to me, one of the conversations I was having with someone and I said, well, if they released a movie about a murder and explaining why murder was wrong and they actually killed someone on screen, yes. we'd all be like, no. But right. yet we're willing to say, let people see this the sin and and the people who make this movie i don't think they think it's a sin they just think it's a bad thing um and but they let think they're doing that. a virtuous thing yeah by, yeah by exposing it quote unquote when instead they're just feeding it um but yeah absolutely it's it's sick and we don't need to we don't need to again i would so with the twitter conversation with someone saying that i was like so should we create a movie like a christian film of let's just say the dad or whatever is addicted to pornography. So in the movie, we show the pornography that he's addicted to on the film to give the audience a better understanding of what he's addicted to. Like, no, because it's completely sin and evil and it's going to stumble other people. If anything, it's a stumbling block. And the evangelical, the, the, the one that professes Christ, you can't get around the stumbling block factor. You, you can say all, all things you want to, but you can't get around this stumbling block. And I also want to say, and, and there are people that made these points, and I agree with them. Um, we only got here to where it's it, it, it's definitely shocking, but not that shocking if you know the cheer and dance world. Because in the cheer and dance world, I grew up a competitive dancer. And it they sexualized little girls and to horrible songs, horrible costumes and horrible moves. I mean, they've been doing this for a long time. So it is only, the only next step would be to put it on all the big screens. I mean, we're already seeing it on big screens for, you know, like Abby Lee's dance moms. Like there's already things that have desensitized us already. So now this was just the next step. Mm Mm-hmm. It just shows that sin is a snowball. Yeah. It's going to continue to get worse. It's never going to go backwards. Yeah, and I keep hearing this argument of people think that this actually won't be, like, a source for someone to watch to, like, satisfy their sinful desire. Well, why won't it? When you... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say... The, that type of sin is an addictive sin. You right. can't, you want to return to it. Right. Um, it's, it's just like being on drugs. It's just like being an alcoholic. Absolutely. And they will seek it out wherever they can find. And that movie made it a lot easier. Yeah, of course they will. And they're, they're, of course they're going to watch it. Because, again, I was talking to a, a law enforcement agent, uh, a wife. Her husband is, a, is in the law enforcement. He's a policeman. And... She was saying that a lot, almost all of the people that they bust for child pornography on their computers, almost all of them have some pictures of little girls in doing gymnastics, leotard, all of those things. So again, you can say the same argument. Yes, they're going to use it for those images because they're already, they're already using dance and gymnastics and all that for images like that so why would they not go to cuties it's like that on steroids mm-hmm. i mean yeah now, it's a horrible argument to make for someone yeah. to do that oh absolutely so 
what should a Christian's response be to this? Because I've also seen people who are disgusted by it, but they say canceling Netflix does nothing. What's your opinion on that? So I don't know. Here, here's the thing. We don't have Netflix. Um, we, when we want to watch Netflix, we watch it on my in-laws, but that is, that's really, I feel like that's left up to your personal convictions. Then mm-hmm. here's why. Almost every, um, I think it'd be, it'd be great to cancel Netflix. If you think you should cancel Netflix, definitely cancel it. Um, see, the other thing, like American Gospel is on Netflix. So sometimes that's, we love to watch American Gospel on there. Um, you can go there and watch some legit Christian films. And I know a ton of people who have come to Christ from watching American Gospel on Netflix. But we, with capitalism, we have the freedom in America to put our money towards things that we want to, and we can take our money away. And yes, Netflix received a giant message because a lot of people, um, a lot of people pulled their accounts and their stocks went way, 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 way down. But then you have to come to the, you have to decide, okay, well then am I going to use Starbucks ever? Because they have an evil, Mm -hmm. evil agenda. Uh, Are we going to use Apple, any Apple products? Because what Apple stands for is incredibly liberal um, and their investments are incredibly liberal. Are we going to use Amazon? Because Amazon sells evil things, but also Mm -hmm. good company is evil. So it just depends on what you, your convictions are and what you feel like you want to spend your money on because almost every big company in America has uh, a very liberal agenda so basically i don't have an answer other than whatever you're convicted to do do it no that's perfect um i totally agree with that completely um now let me bring up something that was actually anna brought this up to me so props to anna i would want to refer people to your highlights again on instagram and you have a highlight on modesty yeah and um it it's one of those subjects that's touchy that people are going to be like, oh, that's legalistic. But now I have a son. So mm-hmm. um, if I ever have a daughter, that daughter is going to look to me for right. what the model of modesty is. Right. And um, if I don't want my daughter to dress a certain way, then I shouldn't be dressing that way either. Yeah. And the way that comes into play is you take your daughter to the beach. You cannot control who's out there. Exactly. Um, and it, it's so scary. Sorry. You go. Take all these toddlers and whatever in these really skimpy bikinis. Mm-hmm. And, and people say it's cute because it's a toddler or whatever. And, and it wouldn't be appropriate on their teenager. But if you wouldn't put your 14 year old in it, you don't need to put your four year old in it because when are you going to create that line of modesty for them? Mm-hmm. They should know from the beginning to, respect their body. Their body is a temple, um, for Christ. And we set that example as well. And yeah, go to my highlights and watch the modesty one. If you actually look at the history of the bikini, it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people will say like, well, it's a big, it's a bathing suit. Like I can wear it. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree, but that is not what a Christian would be called to do. And you know, if you were being honest, and I know this is such a cliche thing to say, but if you were meeting Jesus on the beach, would you wear that bikini? If you wanted to be in the rapture, would you want to be, and again, I don't know what your eschatology is, but you want to be floating up in your bikini. (laughs) So odd picture. But we have to respect our bodies And, and the Bible calls us to be modest. So I know that this is for especially American women, but they, they like to bug so hard about this modesty issue and the bikini and bathing suits and short shorts and, and belly shirts. And these things are not God honoring. And again, it goes back to the stumbling block of, is this going to make a brother stumble? Yes, it's going to, that's not, that's not your job as a woman, as a woman, you are not called to, well, nobody is, but you don't want to cause your brother to stumble into lust. Mm -hmm. And then people always say, well, aren't men accountable too? Aren't men accountable? Of course they're accountable. 
But scripture is very clear on to call women to dress modestly. So you have a job too, as well mm-hmm. as they do. But you also have an important role in not causing another one to stumble. But yeah. anyway, go check that highlight out because of the, yes. the history is interesting. And the motivation behind what you're wearing, that is huge. Exactly. Exactly. Because why, like, Are you for me. Are trying to glorify yourself? Yeah, and or think draw about how, yourself. I think about like wearing shorts that are shorter than is appropriate in my opinion. Um, that's not a comfort thing. Like I would never wear those because they're comfortable. Right. Um, so I know that the motivation if I were ever going to wear shorts like that would be self-honoring. Right. Um, right. And- it's not it doesn't even always have to be you want people to look at you, but it could be you are trying to celebrate your own flesh mm-hmm. either way. Even if you're saying, well, I'm not trying to get the attention of men. It doesn't matter because you're still glorifying your flesh. Yep. And, and also it sounds kind of cheesy, but like, is it that big of a deal to, to not wear a bikini? Is it, is it that right. big of a deal? Not, no. And it's actually way better because I used to wear them in high school and stuff. I was never, I wasn't a strong Christian until I got married and you're never comfortable. I mean, you're always pulling at it and feeling uncomfortable and feeling, um, self-conscious and like, you're never super comfortable. Let's just admit it. Yeah. Um, And I, I've never worn one because it, my mom raised me not to, but also it never was appealing to me because it made me feel uncomfortable to even think about that. So how much simpler is it to say that, I am being modest, not because I want to hide who I am, but literally because I am free in Christ to wear yes. something that I'm isn't honoring, revealing. I'm honoring either my future husband or my current husband. Which, and that, I mean, motivation can also go the wrong way. I think the opposite too, whenever this is, we didn't even plan this, but when you're talking about modesty, it can go in the way of, well, I'm going to cover every inch of me yes. and that can become self-righteousness. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's, I, I think that with modesty, it can go. Yeah. So yes, people use the opposite thing. Like, well, to you, a bikini is immodest, but to, I don't know, other Christians showing your ankles is, is immodest. So where is the line? Listen, we're, we're called to, you know, God put us in the culture that we live in. And he calls us to bring glory to him. But also, you can be a deterrent for Christ. Like if you wore a veil and smock and dresses to your ankles all the time and covered every inch of your skin, that's not drawing anybody to Christ. You can live within the culture you live in and still properly adorn yourself. And some of that goes to your own conscience. I remember our pastor before we moved to our new church in a new town used to say that, you know, as people mature in Christ, like I'll have people come up who have been saved and have on really short dresses or whatever. And then over time, the hemlines come down uh, more and more. And I'm not saying to your ankles, but just to a modest place where people aren't going to look at you as a sexual object. They're just looking at you. They say just are people looking at your body or your face? So I think that it's perfectly fine to wear a dress that is face framing that isn't showing cleavage but is to your knees i don't know our culture doesn't see calves as sexual whereas other cultures do but not ours um it just depends on conscience some of that some of that grayer area we have freedom in christ but we also know for a fact that you're not supposed to show your cleavage because scripture says that therefore your husband and you're not, you're not to cause men to lust. And so some men have a problem with lust and that's on them. And, you know, men can lust sometimes over anything and that can be their problem. But many times it's ours Mm -hmm. is part of the problem. So anyway, you you just need to follow your conviction on that and the Lord will lead you where in an honorable fashion. Yeah. And it's, it's not, it's it's not like we're in a cage and the world is walking around free. I think that's often our thought. Really, 
whenever you don't have to worry about these things, and it doesn't mean that I don't take a few minutes to decide what I'm going to wear. And it's not like I only have three outfits, but at the same time, how freeing is it that I don't have to do all of these things that the world does to to make themselves appealing. Right. Um, Right. We're not seeking the applause of men. Yes. It's just so freeing. Yeah. We don't have to worry about that. Exactly. Well, did you have any other thoughts that you wanted to add? Anything else that you're just like, man? (laughs) No. Well, I mean, again, we could talk all day. So, well, I just want to say thanks for letting me come on. And hopefully if we ever sit down again, it won't take a million months for it to happen. And hopefully my notes will be in easier fashion and I won't be, won't be all over the place. Listen, I had the easy job, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So wait, I have to ask one fun question Okay. because that's who I am. So are you a pumpkin spice person or no? No. No. I hate, I hate all pumpkin spice. Okay. Every, I, are you? I am. I uh, love pumpkin. I, I, um, I'm a, I like the peppermint mochas. I'm more of in the, in the winter fall time. I like the peppermint mochas and I like orange spice things. I do not like pumpkin at all. Really? So (laughs) you drink, but you drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. I love coffee. I, and my husband hates pumpkin. So it really worked out, honestly, because if I get something pumpkin, he doesn't eat it. He won't mess with it. My husband doesn't drink coffee at all. So all the creamer is mine. I do love creamer. I have, um, coffee. Sorry. My brain is starting to shut down. I have my coffee behind me, not my coffee, my husband's. And then in my drawer right here, it's all my tea. So, and I have my little tea cup. That's Nobody cute. that's listening can see it's, no. but, um, yeah, but I yeah. love coffee, all coffees and all creamers, except for pumpkin spice. <laughs> I feel like as like someone who is, um, a Calvinist that I'm supposed to like coffee, but that's hilarious. <laughs> like, I haven't even thought about that. What's that? Um, what there's that? like, oh, there's a coffee company. That's like a reformed coffee company. What? I can't remember who they are. I mean, obviously, I don't drink that's coffee, hilarious. so I've never paid attention that much. But oh, uh, that's hilarious. I listen, there, there are these cards that we sell at my work that are like, um, they have all have reformers on them, and I think it's a Spurgeon one that has something about cheese, and I like cheese, so I think I'm good. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to find that it. quote because it's gonna annoy me. <laughs> but love uh, you too. But anyway, well, I appreciate it. And maybe we'll have to get back together and talk again um, because politics are always changing. And um, I think in the next month or so, things are going to go really crazy. So I'll start stacking up questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we may need to come back post-election depending uh, on what's going on. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And I'm going to do my closing stuff really quick. So later, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, angry outbursts, any of that, you can go ahead and reach out to us on email at a lot of thoughts podcast at gmail.com. Or you can visit us on Instagram at a lot of thoughts podcast. Or if you want to bypass me and go to the source with your complaints, comments, and angry outbursts, <laughs> you can check out Katie's page at the Brian millennial. You have a website too, don't you now? Yeah, it's the Brian Millennial.com. There's like nothing on it, but the listens I put together. Uh, okay. One day I'll have things on it. But yes, you if you have any complaints about anything I said, please leave sweet Courtney alone and come to me. When I say that, when I have guests, nobody else offers to take the complaints. Oh, okay. girl, I don't mind. I get complaints <laughs> every day. So please, <laughs> if you're willing to have a, a real conversation, yes, come to me. Yes. If you're going to come with like this super mad angry outburst and don't want to have a conversation, then I'll block you, but whatever. <laughs> and scripture, we love scripture. I've had people yeah. who disagreed with me who use tons of scripture and I'm like, I'd rather that than anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Talk if you want to have a conversation and you disagree, let's do it. Yep. So, okay. Well, thank you so much, Katie. And I will talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.